And this weekend, I'm in Bowling Green, Kentucky, attending the Holly NHRA Hot Rod Reunion. Now, if you've never been to this event before, well, they got a lot of stuff going on. Now, obviously, they've got nostalgia drag racing. They've got a huge car show, a great swap meet, a manufacturer's midway with all kinds of parts and other cool stuff, and they've even got Hot Rod Heroes. Now, if you've never been here before, let me take you on a little tour to show you what we got. Wow, you know, this is the nostalgia drags here this weekend, and, well, it doesn't get much more nostalgic than this. Check it out. Six Stromberg 97s here on this old rocket motor, and check out the paintwork on this thing. Man, it's unbelievable. This thing's got metal flake on it that I haven't seen, like, since the 60s. This is a really nice period-correct car. I love the slam look. I love the chop top. In fact, I don't even know if I could get in this thing. Now, believe it or not, this is a 1930 Pierce Arrow, and it belongs to Joey Collins from Portland, Tennessee. Now, on the inside, he's carried the theme all the way through there. Just check out the seats. Everything is nostalgic, but I particularly like that steering wheel. Now, the steering wheel might say Pierce Arrow in the center of it, but it's actually a 1941 steering wheel with a built-in Necker's knob there. You just grab it, and you can spin that wheel like nobody's business. One year only, pretty rare item. And you know, one of my favorite 55s of all times has to be this car here. Now this thing, believe it or not, starred in the movie Two-Lane Blacktop, and well, James Taylor had his way with it, and he had his way with quite a few others as they street raced across America there. This is the real deal. Now, the current owner of this 55 is Walt Bailey. He comes all the way here from Maryland now, and well, he cleared up quite a few misconceptions that I had about the car. I thought I knew a little bit about the car, but Walt set me straight, Walt. Like, for instance, what about the L88 that's claimed to have been in this car? Well, they were actually 454s. There were three cars built for the movie. Two of them got 454s, one got an L88 427, and that was just a factor of three crate motors from GM came in. One of them happened to be the old 427, yeah, and the yeah. other two were the new 454s. Gotcha. Well, yeah. here's something else that really threw me as I looked at this car here. I noticed that, you know, this thing is supposed to be period correct. It is. And it is, but all the old straight axle cars that I saw had leaf springs in the front. This right. thing's got something else that's pretty unique. Right, it's a coilover suspension, and it's one of the first coilover suspensions that Richard Ruth ever built, and after this, he never went back to the old leaf springs. This car drives like it's got a stock suspension in it. There's no bump steer. It, it runs down the road straight. The wheel comes back when you turn the steering, go around a corner, turn the steering wheel, it comes back on you. That's great. It runs great. That's great. Now, I guess that is a pretty healthy big block. It's got a wind intake on it and right. a couple of hollies. Yeah, it, it's strong. Is it, it? pulls. Yeah. What kind of gear you got in it? Transmission? It's got an M22 Muncie, the old uh, Howler transmission. Yeah, I bet that thing sings to you. Oh, it does. And right now it's got a 323 because I do drive it. Oh. I, I run the car down the interstate. I bet you're a big hit at all the cruises back there yeah. in Frederick. And sometimes they don't even know what they're looking at. Wow. It's funny because they'll think, oh, here comes another clone car. <laughs> well, let's take a look inside. Sure. Now on the inside, I see you've got those old fiberglass seats. Are those from the kind that they used in the movie? V very close. These are replacements. They are. When I found the car, it had a crushed velvet bench seat in it. Ooh. Ooh. I like these better. <laughs> yeah. The gauges are period correct. Gauges are period correct. Shifter, steering wheel, all that Everything. stuff is right on the money. That's a Kaviko boat steering wheel. Is that right? Stainless steel steering wheel. Yeah, it's what Richard used on him when he built the cars. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah, Richard Ruth is the uh, builder. Right. Did he build all three of those cars? He did. And they were all configured pretty much the same? Uh, pretty much. Now, one of them was a stunt car. So it has stock suspension on it. Okay. Steel body. And in All fact, right. Richard Ruth restored this car from the firewall forward. Oh, okay. When I found it, it had a Camaro front clip under it. Wow. Well, he did a great job on it. Love the radius rear wheel wells. Where'd you find those tires? eBay. 40-year-old <laughs> Firestone racing tires. And they still hold air? They hold air, but they're a little scary being so old, but no doubt. They, they look correct on the car. Yeah, that's some pretty cool stuff there. And just in case you're wondering, yes, those are the original fiberglass doors that were installed on the car. Now, check out something back here. You're going to see some extra bracketry, Walt. What's that all about there? Well, that's, that's what they use to uh, mount the cameras and platforms for the crew to sit on while they're filming. They actually use this car running down the road, filming with the actors inside it. 
Wow, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Now, check it out. I even noticed that you still got the original California plate on there. It's a number that showed up in the movie. Yep. Really appreciate you sharing this with us and giving us a chance to look it over and straighten out some of those fallacies. Well, that's fine, Chuck. Thanks a lot. All right, you bet. My, well. My pleasure. There's sure a lot of cool cars here this weekend at the Holly NHRA reunion and well that 57 certainly is a classic but I gotta tell you there's one here that really spins my crank it's this 61 Ford Starliner right here check it out now if you look at this thing this is a 390 cubic inch big block FE motor and if you look underneath that cast lumen mare cleaner I'll tell you what you're gonna see there are three Holly two barrels under there giving it a 401 horsepower rating now, this 61 Starliner belongs to Zach and Brenda Straits. They come from Stanton, Virginia, all the way here to Bowling Green with this 61. I got to tell you, it's a beauty. Just check out under the dash. They got period correct gauges, tack. They've even got a moon gas pedal on there. Man, I haven't seen one of those for a long time. And even the steering wheel, straight out of the 60s, man. You got to love it. Now, you may be wondering why they call these things a Starliner. And let me tell you, it's got everything to do with this huge back window here. You can climb in the back seat there with your honey, stare up and see every star in the sky, and well, that's why they call it the Starliner. Now, there are a lot of other stars here that we want to take a look at, so let's go do that. I bumped into here it's Bruce Larson now Bruce is the grand marshal at this event this year and a lot of you guys have been drag racing fans for a number of years are gonna remember Bruce Bruce welcome thank you very much nice I to see be here. We're, we're standing in front of a Camaro here but you know I've, uh -huh. I've, I've watched your career for a long time and it seems to me that you used to run a couple of Chevelles that's right I had a 66 Chevelle that was the first all fiberglass funny car in the country then we upgraded it to a 67, and then a year later we built this flip-top Logie funny car. Uh-huh. Well, the Chevelle, though, the 66 Chevelle, as I recall, that was somewhat of a, a real trendsetter, wasn't it? It was. As I said, the first uh, time that a body had been made all in fiberglass, and it was a homemade box tube chassis, but it was kind of revolutionary for its time. That's really cool. Yeah. Now, I used to work for NHRA, and I remember you going down the track in the later years, I guess. Well, yeah. we probably don't even want to say when that was, but I remember following your career for a while there, and what are you doing today? I'm following this nostalgia tour, just having a good time doing these shows and cackle fests, and I have several different cars that kind of qualify for the old nostalgia. Get up. Oh, that's great. Now, tell us a little bit about this Camaro here. This thing is, looks like it's been totally restored. It's period correct, right? It is. It's exactly as it was built back in 1968. Uh, it has... Uh, an original 427 cast iron Chevy engine. Yep. There weren't a whole lot of mods inside them back in those days. Just put a blower on and put a lot of nitro in it and go racing. And it, it held up very well. Now, a lot of the viewers that are you know into current drag racing probably don't recognize some of this. I mean, that hardware there just remotely resembles the stuff that's on them right now. Sure. Can you give us a little idea of what you were looking at here? Sure. Well, we're looking at a four port Hillborn injector which is kind of rare and obsolete now. A Bowers 1071 supercharger. The old Gilmer belt drives have evolved uh, from these coarse teeth into fine teeth now. This is like eight millimeter, it's gone to 14 millimeter. Uh, but the rest of the car, you know, these are stall headers built up in Pennsylvania. Mallory ignition, super mag in the back of the engine. This tank on this side was used for coolant Mm, and yeah. the coolant was circulated by an original Chevrolet fuel pump oh, wow. because this is the Hillborn injector pump. So when people try to figure out the plumbing, they get a little confused here. Of course, the nitro is over in that tank. Sure. Now, what kind of horsepower did one of these make on the dyno back then? Well, nobody ran them on the dyno. The dynos sure. weren't capable of that. But 
the engineers estimated about 1,500 horsepower 1500 back then. 1,500 horsepower, wow. As opposed wow. to 8,000 now in the, the big Chrysler Hemi engines. Yep. Boy, the game sure has changed, hasn't it, Bruce? Hasn't it? Yeah. Well, listen, I'm glad that you're having a good time. It's always good to see you. I'm yep. glad to see you again, and yep. I wish you a long time having fun in this here nice sport. Nice to see you. And Absolutely. Nice to see all the fans here. Thank okay. you, Bruce. Okay. You know, you can call me old-fashioned if you want to, but hey, eBay just doesn't do it for me. There's nothing quite like a good old-fashioned swap meet to really get in there, check out the parts, hold them in your hands, and actually sit and dicker for the best price that you can get. Now, look what I came up with here. This is an old Holly Pro Dominator intake tunnel ram for a big block Chevrolet. It's even got a couple of, uh, look like Holly double pumper carburetors on the top of this thing here. This is going to be the perfect thing for my newest project. That, the owner is standing right here, Chuck Hansen. Charlie Crawhorn. Charlie, it's nice to meet you. Nice Listen, to meet you. Uh, would you take a hundred bucks for this? Not going to happen. No. no. Okay. Well, I can't blame a man for trying. How about a hundred and fifty? Probably not. Oh, you're going to be one of those kind of guys, huh? Mm, yeah. All right. Two hundred. Not going to happen. Two fifty? Not going to happen. kinds of hot rod heroes here this weekend and well you never know who you're gonna run into check this out I just bumped into Jim Otty back here and we've been sitting here just swapping lies and telling stories it's been great Jim it's really good to see you Man, again my friend it's a pleasure to be here pleasure to get this honor I had no idea this was going on this is I won't miss one of these oh I would and you're an honoree this yeah, year yeah. You're, an, you're an inductee First time. this yep, year yep. that's terrific exactly now you've had a real long career in drag racing and you were telling me a little bit ago you know because we were talking about how to get young yep. kids involved right tell me uh, tell me your story again well back in geez it had to be in the mid in the mid 50s uh, belonged to a car club and then we had a field trip one Sunday and we went to what they called back then it was Kohler Air Force Base which is Dragway Park Hugo Ontario now okay. but yeah but we all went there and parked by the side of the drag strip sat on the hoods and watched these cars race and a G and E G on the windows and like well, what is all that about? Oh, different <laughs> classes, whatever. Well, I had a thirty-six Chevy Coupe at the time, so two weeks later, sure enough, I'm a Dunkirk Gregory running E gas. E gas. <laughs> had a six owner fifty seven Chevy motor in it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh worst scenario, won the class. Guy, oh. ha guy handed me 35 bucks. I was hooked. I thought the guy wanted to buy the car. Right? Oh, you I, were totally hooked I was done, buddy. That was it for me. <laughs> Fifty well, some years later. Well, right back behind us here, we have your old race car. Yeah. Tell everybody about this thing a little bit. This is this has got to bring back some old good memories. Oh, buddy, we. I built actually. Short story as I can make it. I ran in. I, I built a B gas Anglia and, and I ran uh, Indy in '65 and I won the B gas class. In fact, don't remember what I had for lunch yesterday, but I remember beating <laughs> Bob Riffle from the rod shop in the final, right? Yeah. So yeah. then we go out and run Eliminator. So we, first car I run Eliminator. Is Doug Cook in the Stonewoods and Cook car? Right? Oh no! So he went by me like I was broken. <laughs> so uh, man, I got to build one of these supercharged yep. cars. So yep. I was going to take the Angley and put a blower motor in, but at that point in time, you had to have a 92-inch wheelbase, and the sure. Angleys were 90-inch. Oh, so, just a little bit short. Enter the Austin, 92-inch, perfect, right? Oh so, yeah, yeah. Got an Austin, built the Austin, uh, went back to Indy the next year and run. Ended up hooking up with KS Pittman and George. Anyway, for the next two, three summers, we toured the East Coast. KS had come up and stay at our house when we when we run Dragway Park in Lancaster. And, and now, uh, KS, this thing has just undergone a complete right, restoration. Right. What is it? I mean, it, this is the way you ran it. This it this looks better than <laughs> well, yeah, how I ran it. But yeah, uh, John Cassio found this car actually ten years ago. He chased it for a couple of years. Ended up. I sold to another guy, had a race car, went to Canada, went to Connecticut, went to Long Island. Johnny kept chasing it. Finally got it, spent eight years restoring this deal. He wow. went through four or five back operations to get this deal done. I think he had most of Buffalo help him with this project, between painting it and 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 if you if you look 
at the parts, I mean the exact engine parts, he found parts that hasn't been made in 50 years. He dug them up, found wow. them, put them on his car. It is about as perfect as you could make. Now that's some real commitment because you and I both know how hard it is to find those old vintage speed parts. Exactly. Bel Delta blower drives haven't been made in 40 years and he's got every part, bolt, done a marvelous job. So. Have you headed down the track yet? I gotta ask you. <laughs> no, it's actually the um, the motor was built in our shop up in Buffalo. Yeah. So it's yep. ready to run. They got some things to finish, and then we're gonna do a little running with it. Oh, that's great. So, I can't wait to do that. Me neither. All right. <laughs> Thanks for talking with me today. Great, great seeing you guys here. Always oh, wonderful having you. All right. Thanks. You betcha. You know, uh, they gave me a golf cart to get around here at the event and <laughs> I guess I forgot where it was and I accidentally got in this little mini here it ain't a whole lot bigger than that golf cart in fact check out these wheels now these things are only 10 inches in diameter and well I've seen golf carts worth bigger wheels than that and under the hood well there's a little three-cylinder engine under there and I don't know if I'd want to take this thing on a very long trip <laughs> Now, you usually don't think of a four-door as being real hot rod material, but hey, the owner of this 66 Impala four-door here obviously marches to a different drummer than most of us do. In fact, check out what's under the hood here. Now, he's stuffed a twin turbo LS motor here, got a couple of spoolers, one on each side, and an intercooler right up front here. Now, Holly's recently got into a bunch of the LS parts here, and you know what? That reminds me. Let's go take a look at them. There's a bunch of them right over here in front of their trailer. Hey, that really was a pretty cool Impala, but you know what? I just checked my watch. We're out of time for this episode. Now, I am going to show you some cool LS stuff, but it's going to be in the next episode.